coming up on the Branding Deep Dive podcast. Brand strategy is simply a plan for the brand to go to the market, okay? Now, the, for me, that, that plan is broken up into two sections. You have the method and you have the mode, okay? Now, the method is the brand, okay? That's the way you're going to do things, who you are as a brand, who you're for, who you're not, why you're different, what way you're going to show up, how are you going to look, how are you going to talk. These things don't change. This is the foundation for your brand. What you have after that is the mode. Now, this is your marketing strategy. Your marketing strategy are the different platforms that you're going to use, the different type of creative that you're going to use, the different types of steps in your funnel that you're going to use. So you have your method and you have your mode. And your method is your brand strategy. This is Ahmed Chima and welcome to the Branding Deep Dive Podcast. If you're new here, this is a podcast where we have in-depth discussions with founders, marketers, and brand strategists on how to build a brand that people love. Today, we're talking to Stephen Horrigan. Stephen is a freelancer turned brand strategist and founder of Brand Master Academy, where he helps freelancers evolve into brand strategists using his proven system. His program has helped over 20,000 students, including clients that have gone from charging just a few thousand dollars to winning projects over $60,000. Steven's unconventional approach has transformed struggling agencies into highly paid and sought after brands. On his Brand Master podcast, Steven has interviewed leaders in the branding industry, including Sonny Bonnell, Douglas Davis, Michael Janda, and Marty Neumeyer. In this episode, we dive deep into how to evolve from a freelancer to brand strategist, what brand strategy even means, why it's important for businesses to invest in brand strategy, and much more. Whether you're already a brand strategist or you don't know what brand strategy even means, this episode is a must listen. Now, here's Steven. Uh, For the audience that may not be familiar with who you are, your background and the work you do, can you give them a brief introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Ahmed. Thanks uh, for for having me on. Thanks for the intro. Um, yeah, look, I'm a, I'm a, a brand strategist. I'm actually a freelance designer turned brand strategist, and uh, you know that that journey from freelance designer to to brand strategist was kind of a you know a, 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 a an isolated one because when I wanted to make the move into to brand strategy from freelance design, we're talking you know, six, seven years ago or, or, or so it's, you know, there wasn't the amount of information, the amount of content out there that, that there is now. Um, and when I went in search for that type of information, I, I was kind of left feeling a little bit, a little bit lost because the information, as I said, it wasn't great. Uh, a lot of it was very contradictory. It was very, very kind of light around the edges. So I, I turned to books and I, I, devoured everything I could about about brand strategy and every facet of brand strategy from you know brand positioning to storytelling to personality messaging copywriting and you know everywhere in between and the reason that I did this was that I actually came across uh, a, a crossroads in my business because I was a, a freelance designer and I noticed a change in the marketplace and that was you know, a lot of my clients started to, uh, you know, go elsewhere with, with their, their budget because they were getting things done cheaper online. You had, you know, the online marketplaces pop up like Odesk and Freelancer and, you know, you, you had the, the, it just completely disrupted the market. So I was left in a position where I had to ask myself, well, you know, why would my uh, audience choose me over my competitors? Um, and the, the reasons that I was coming up with, which, you know, I had more in-depth processes, I had more experience, et cetera, you know, they just weren't cutting the mustard. Um, so I really had to, to dig deep to find a differentiation strategy and that, that opened up this world into, into positioning and then brand strategy. And it's something that I became really obsessed with and what I built for myself in, in finding the, my uniqueness for, for my business and how I would actually deliver that to my clients. I, I built a, a, a product and a framework that, uh, you know, that more and more people 
I knew needed. Uh, entrepreneurs needed it when they were building their brand. Professional brand builders needed it to better help their clients. And I, I just kind of went in there and filled a gap with Brand Master Academy to teach entrepreneurs and, and uh, brand building professionals how to build brands using strategy that goes way beyond the visuals and start with who the customer is and why the brand is different. And for me, that is what branding is really all about. It's it's really, you know, defining exactly who you're trying to help and exactly why they should choose you over their competitors. So that's that's what I do today. I, I spend most of my time uh, promoting and marketing uh, Brand Master Academy through my YouTube channel and my blog and, and various channels. And, uh, you know, it, it, I'm doing something that I absolutely love and I'm passionate about. So it's, you know, it, it's something that I really enjoy. Yeah, no, this is um, exciting for me because, I mean, I was uh, a freelance designer. I also did some freelance video work um, mm. for a while. And then I, I, I thought I'd just be able to make the transition to like brand strategist at some point, but that's just not, it's not as easy as it sounds, right? Like it's not, you don't just put a, put on a hat and say, oh, brand strategist, change your Instagram bio. Uh, and now like the clients are rolling in, right? So I uh, wanted to ask you, like, I think for me, the toughest part about this process um, was the actual lead generation part, right? So like, um, how do you, I guess, like, I'd like to start here in the lead generation, right? Like someone that is like me, uh, as an example, like in a lot of freelancers that are probably out there, a lot of the work they get is from word of mouth, right? They have a friend, mm -hmm. They need a project done and then they kind of get into this and then now they have a couple clients, but then when their projects are done, they don't know where else to uh, kind of search for the clients and they go to like Fiverr or Upwork or whatever it is. And now they're competing with like the lowest cost, you know, like people uh, overseas that can do the, the same work for half the price and are, have like templates ready for whatever the client's looking for. Right. So mm -hmm. how do you go from, you know, word of mouth referrals, clients here and there, your friends, family members that you know, to actually generating new clients. Yeah. And, and, and look, I mean, that's the, that's the, the, the question on, on most freelancers lips, you know, how do I get more clients? How do I attract the right type of clients? How do I move away from competing on price? And all of these are really critical questions that I started to ask myself. So I've been on that journey. I've been there. And, you know, really what you said earlier is super important. That idea that, you know, you don't just change the title on your website and on, on your social media page and call yourself a brand strategist. You know, you really need to know your craft. You need to know what brand strategy is. You need to have systems and processes to be able to take your client through those and out the other side so that they have a brand that they believe in. And, you know, that, that is your first port of call. You know, if, if, if you are a, a freelance designer and you're looking to differentiate yourself from the rest of the marketplace so that you don't have to go on freelancer and Odesk to compete for prices and you know you don't want to deal with those types of clients who are squeezing you for every single penny because you know i've been there and and you you know my my life went from doing work that i really enjoyed doing that i love i loved design and i would put my headphones on and disappear into illustrator all day drinking my coffee listening to music and you know th that was the craft that i absolutely loved but when it came to business and dealing with the types of clients who, you know, wanted everything for nothing, expect uh, expected endless changes, and you know, uh, it it just sucked the life out of me. And it's it's something that you know it, it it really became harder and harder over time. But when I started to understand the 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 value of n not just providing visuals for a client, but being able to help the client to come to their own realization and their own epiphany that, well, hey, what I'm actually building here is not just a logo on a website. I, I, I want to build a brand. And I know that a brand 
is more than just a logo on a website. And your clients instinctively know this. And the reason that they instinctively know, know this is the same reason that we all know it. It's because we're all consumers and we all have our own relationship with brands. And when you start to, to talk through business terms with your clients and you start to ask your clients questions related to their business and related to their brand, and that forces them to look at their business differently and think longer term and, and think of a, a bigger vision uh, that they, they, than they might have started off with, you know, that's when they see you in a different light. You know, you're asking them questions, you're controlling the conversation, you're putting them on the spot rather than them putting you on the spot. And a, a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of newbies, when they get into this field of, of brand strategy, they feel that they need to strategize. So they'll speak to their clients, they'll ask them a couple of questions, and then they'll start to come up with ideas about, you know, what they could do for their strategy. And, you know, that's, that's not the game of, of being a strategist. That's certainly not the, the right way to do it. Because what that does is it takes away the natural power and authority that you do have to ask your clients infinite am amount of questions about the, the business that they're in, about the brand that they're trying to build, about the competitors that are in their marketplace, about the difference that they're going to make in the market, about the type of audience that they'll want to go after. And what you'll find is, is that in doing that, they will they will be forced to, to to look internally and to ask themselves questions that they hadn't done before. And they'll start to see you in a different light. Now, when you're able to take your clients through a process like this, and as I said, you don't just change your title. You need the process, processes and the frameworks on the back, back of that to take the answers to their questions and to build a strategy for your client and then to send them on their way with, with the, the feeling and the belief that they now have a brand they understand exactly who their audience is they've got those defined buyer personas they know exactly who they're talking to they know exactly why they're different in comparison to their competitors and they know the messages that they want to put out there in the market they know the personality that they're going to use and the attributes that they're going to leave with they know what the brand's dna is they know who their brand is now you send a, a client like that off into the marketplace and their, their chances of success is far greater and they will tell other people about that. And that is how you grow your reputation. What you also need to do then is to go out into the marketplace and start talking like a strategist. It's all well and good mm -hmm. changing the, the title on your, on your website and changing the title on your Instagram page. But if you're still talking about pixels and websites and you're not getting into the nitty gritty of brand strategy and why customers and prospects need to understand the importance of all of these strategic elements, then you're still positioned as that freelance designer and they're still going to see you in that light. It's not until you really understand the craft, start asking your clients the right amount of questions, the right strategic questions, and then going out there into the market and talking about all of these points, will your audience start to see you in a different light? And when they do, that is when you can start to have different kinds of conversations with them. And that is when they will start to see a different kind of value in what you do. And this is brand strategy 101. This is positioning. This is what positioning is. It's defining exactly what you're going to talk to the market about, the way you're going to talk to that market with the, with the premise and the idea that they will see you in a certain light and have a certain perception about you, your brand, and the value that you can offer. And that's when they're prepared to have those types of questions or those types of conversations. And that's when they're prepared to pay more because they're able to see that you offer so much more value than just the pixels and the websites. So that is, that is if, if you want to generate leads and if you want to deal with clients who are going to see you differently than, than that, just that, that freelance designer, then change how you talk to your clients start mm. having different conversations, move away from conversations about pixels and about color palettes and about typography and move to conversations about audience personas, about the customer journey, about differentiation, about your competitor analysis, about your brand personality, your brand attributes, your brand DNA. Start to talk about these things and you will you will get your client, your, your prospect responding to that in a way that they 
they just don't respond to in terms of visuals and logos because when it comes to that you know we all know that your your clients become creative directors and they just they want a certain type of color palette they want to copy a certain type of logo but when you start to ask them questions that make them make them understand that there's more to this branding thing that they initially thought that's when they'll see you as an expert that will be able to help them Hmm. So it sounds like you're saying like, number one is you, you like your job is not to just give the client a bunch of ideas, ask a couple of questions, give ideas, but rather help the customer get to or client get to their own epiphanies through this framework, through having a deep understanding of brand strategy. Uh, and you really have to walk them through how to create their all the things within brand strategy like, that you mentioned, brand positioning, all, all that stuff. And then the second piece, which is, I think, I feel like this might be actually harder, um, which is actually putting yourself out there and talking about uh, brand strategy, especially like people that are, uh, I mean, I'm generalizing here, right? But like generally people that are designers and creatives, like, you know, they, they like to do their work. They don't like to go out there and talk about things, you know, put themselves out there uh, and that kind of thing. So I think that two-step formula is uh, super important. And I think for me personally, I think I understood that initial part, like that you got to start changing the conversations, but putting yourself out there, uh, I think that's something that I, I didn't really understand the value of until I actually started the podcast. And then you start seeing kind of some of the opportunities that come up and that kind of thing is like when you put yourself out there as this person you're talking about these kind of things, uh, then things start to click. So and and, you. and yeah, and, and and you're dead right. And look, I get it in terms of uh, putting yourself out there for the first time because. I've done it. You've done it. It's it's it was as awkward for me as <laughs> as it was for 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 anybody else starting out. I've got a video on YouTube where I I have this snippet of my first few videos and all of the outtakes that I that I did. And uh, I love look. I, I used to send uh, I used to send my outtakes to my my family on WhatsApp in our WhatsApp group. So, and my sisters would just hell with laughter because I was so bad. Um, and, and that's, you know, it was, it was that uncomfortable starting out. And I was so rigid. I I, I remember, you know, I, I had this idea of a video and I, I'd, I'd have this serious face and I'd be like, here are four reasons that you need brand strategy. And it, <laughs> like, look, looking back on it now, it was, you know, it's, but it was such an important step for me to 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 move forward and i can i can look back now and and see all the steps that came from that step and yes it was uncomfortable but the more you put yourself out there the more you realize that you know first and foremost you know at, at the end of the day you you you're just going out there and putting your ideas across. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be 100% polished. And what you'll find is that the, 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 the actual, actually the better you get at it, the more followers you get, the more criticism that you get compared to starting mm. off. So, you know, just put yourself out there, be bold. You know, you can, you can do like a 30 day challenge or a 90 day challenge where you just say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to commit to this. And I'm going to start creating content or creating videos. And, you know, if I follow this process, I know that the 90th video or the 30th video that I do is going to be 20 times better than the first video that I do. And if, mm -hmm. if I'm able to commit to that, if I'm able to, if I'm able to say to myself, well, am I prepared to, to put in this in investment? If on the other side, I can get that out of it. Well then, well then yes, because you know, that's, that's, you have to know what your vision is and what your path and, and where you want to go. And if what you want is over the other side of that river, then you need to build that bridge and start walking across it. So, you know, for anyone who is scared of putting themselves out there, it's a, it's a big part of marketing yourself. And it's just something that you're going to have to overcome. Um, and look, you can start off easily by creating carousels and, and, and things like that, where there is no face. Uh, you can start writing articles as well. You can do guest posting, things like that. There's a lot of different ways that you create content, but start putting your ideas out there so that your audience has the opportunity to see what you're all about. And that's how you'll start changing the perception of what you do in the marketplace with your prospects. Yeah. Next question I wanted to ask you is, uh, in terms of 
Uh, there's a lot of definitions out there for uh, branding, brand strategy, uh, and just like there's a lot of like I think a lot of people don't understand what it actually means. So I want to get your take. What is brand strategy, and what does it mean? Uh, what's the, what's your definition? Yeah. So so look, brand strategy is simply a plan for the brand to go to the market. Okay. Now. The, for me, that, that plan is broken up into two sections. You have the method and you have the mode, okay? Now, the method is the brand, okay? That's the way you're going to do things, who you are as a brand, who you're for, who you're not, why you're different, what way you're going to show up, how are you going to look, how are you going to talk. These things don't change. This is the foundation for your brand. What you have after that is the mode. Now, this is your marketing strategy. Your marketing strategy are the different platforms that you're going to use, the different type of creative that you're going to use, the different types of steps in your funnel that you're going to use. So you have your method and you have your mode. And your method is your brand strategy. So that's looking internally at your brand and asking that fundamental question. And the most important questions are, who are we for? And why should they choose us over our competitors? That is brand strategy 101. And that is the center point of, of, of branding and brand strategy. And if I had to distill branding down into, into one or two questions, it would be those two questions. What you're doing in building a brand is you're creating this entity to communicate to the market that this is who we're for and this is why you should choose us. And that, that's why every brand exists out there in the market. They exist to serve a certain type of audience, but how you communicate that audience is critical. And in first getting crystal clear about who your audience is, you really narrow down and become a lot more specific and a lot more relevant to them. So let me give you an example. If I see an ad for a small business owner and it's talking about um, the challenges that small business owners have, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, marketing and, and building a website and, you know, all these types of things that small business owners come across. If I see an ad like that versus if I see an ad for a brand strategist talking to me about getting more leads, about moving away from, you know, bottom drawer prices, not competing on price and, and having a commoditized service. The, those are, are, of course, yes, I have a small business. Of course, yes, I need to market my business. Of course, yes, I need to, to, to build a website. But the other message is so much more relevant to me. And it's only people and businesses that take the time to get a lot more specific about who their market is, can they create messages that are more relevant that get the attention of those types of people? So getting clear on who your audience is, is the very, very first step. Once you're clear on who your audience is, then it becomes a lot easier to understand exactly what it is that they already have as an option in the marketplace, what they want, what they don't want, and how you can give them what they need in a different kind of way from your competitors. And those two things combined is the cornerstone of your strategy. Once you have those two things, everything else falls into place. You know exactly who you're talking to. You know exactly what you're going to tell them in terms of how you're different, how you can make their lives better, why they should choose you over your competitors. Then it's about building out the rest of the brand and that that would be you know your your verbal identity and your personality you know what way are you going to show up to the marketplace because two people can show up to the same party and they could be the same age same demographics but they dress entirely differently they have a different type of personality one has tattoos and accessories and a leather jacket and a ripped t-shirt the other one has a suit and tie and straight hair they're the same demographics. They come from the same area, but they are two entirely different people that will speak to different types of people in the room. So getting that personality, getting those attributes right, getting that tone of voice, that verbal identity, and that visual identity, how your brand is seen, is then the outer ring 
of that brand strategy. And that is your method. And that is the brand strategy itself. It's knowing who Mm -hmm. your audience is, why you're different, and then how we're going to communicate that difference to the audience. And that that is brand strategy to me. But to sum it up, it's your plan and it's your method to bring your business to the market. I've noticed, at least when I'm talking to people, a lot of times you can tell how much of an expert someone is in like how complex or simple the answer is. And usually like Mm -hmm. the more complex, when you ask them questions, usually like they actually don't know what they're talking about and they just kind of end up confusing (laughs) the audience um, in my experience at least. And so uh, I want to give you props here, Stephen, like where, you know, you've really distilled down branding in a a pretty simple, easy to understand framework. Um, And the reality is that, you know, these things are not, um, it, it shouldn't confuse your clients, right? Like if you're talking about brand strategy and you're confusing people, uh, then you're you're doing something wrong. You're doing the opposite of what you should be doing. Branding, as you and you've hit the nail on the head, and I couldn't agree with you more. Branding is about making things more easy to understand. That's that's mm. what it's about. So a lot of my audience is. Uh, Number one, they're just like individuals that are looking to inc- you know, improve their personal brand. And then number two, it's small business owners that are kind of wearing a lot of hats uh, mm-hmm. themselves, right? And they're kind of in-house operations, not really hiring a lot of people out. And so for them, I think one of the distinctions you made here, uh, which I'd like to dive into a little bit, is that marketing strategy is not the same as branding. If you're a small business owner, right, and you have some revenue, you have some money coming in, you have something that's kind of working... How do you make the decision on like right now I need a marketing strategy to increase revenue or whatever, or uh, I need to hire a branch strategist? And at what stage mm-hmm. in your business or your small business should you be thinking through these things? Look, that that's a, a, an absolutely great question because yes, there are businesses who go out there and achieve a nominal level of success, not because they don't have a brand. It's in spite of the fact that they don't have a brand. So they've Mm. gone into the market and a few factors have aligned within the right conditions. They went to the market with the right type of offer offer at the right time. And in, in a way that the market has, they've, they've had enough exposure to, to, to achieve that, that traction in the marketplace. And, you know, for, for business owners like that, uh, you know, I, I the first thing that I would say to a business owner like that is is congratulations first and foremost because you have achieved something that is particularly difficult uh, within within business and that's achieving that that early level success which a lot of businesses fail to do. But now you're at a distinct advantage to other startups who are coming into the market without that revenue and without that budget. Now, for those who are considering, well, what do I do now? Do I do I build a brand or do I do I get a, a brand strategist or do I get a marketing strategist to try and to try and get more uh, more leads? And I, I, I totally uh, I totally get that. But the amount of business owners that I have seen come to me and through my students as well, who invested in a logo, invested in a website with the idea that once they have a logo and once they have a, have a website, they then have a brand and then all they need is traffic going to that brand then they go out and spend the other second half of their budget on facebook ads and zuckerberg is happy to take that money and send across (laughs) people to your website but that doesn't make a brand and that doesn't make success there are so many more pieces to the puzzle when it comes to building a brand now if if you do that if, if that's what you do if you if you run to the market to to try and generate leads your marketing is going to be so much more expensive than than if you if you do it the right mm. way around the the way I see it it's it's like you're standing on on uh, on on a cliff and you've got a, a a river running through the middle and on the other side you can you can see that success you can taste it you can you feel it and you know those who 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 you know, run to the market and, and get themselves a logo and a website and run to, to Zuckerberg for, for traffic, you know, to me, they're pole vaulting across to the other side. And brand builders are taking their time and they're building a bridge, you know, one piece at a time. And, and you know, they're, they're not making any rash decisions. They're not jumping. They're, they're really taking their time to, to, to get across to the other side, 
in your own, you know, a really considered way. The reason that I say that marketing is more expensive if you don't have a brand, it's because when you are crystal clear on exactly who your audience is, then when you put ads out into the marketplace, you can be so much more targeted in who you go after. When you know exactly how you're positioned and why you're different in comparison to your competitors, you know how to engage your audience and what to say. When you know the personality that you're going to lead with and the attributes that you're going to communicate and the tone of voice that you're going to use, then the language that you use within your marketing strategy is going to be so much more effective. And then, of course, you have a brand, which is an entity, to bank the equity that you earn and the reputation that you earn over time. So these business owners, they, they, they have a bank account for their for their the revenue that comes in. So when when they provide a service, they they sell a product, they get revenue. And that revenue goes into an entity called a bank account within a financial institution. Those who go out into the market without a brand, what they're trying to do is they're trying to build a reputation, but they don't have an institution or an entity to bank that reputation. So even if they do get clients, they're not building a brand because they're not crystal clear on exactly who they're for. They don't have a very specific method that they use and a positioning strategy and a type of, of, of message that they use in the market. So it, it's very easy to be inconsistent and confuse the market, even if they've bought from you before. So having that brand in place and that foundation that I talked about before, the method is your foundation, the mode is you know the tactics that you use, having that foundation and that, that institution, that bank account for your equity coming in, that's when you can start to build that perception in the marketplace. And that's when you can really start to build on the success that you have. So it's not just a short-lived thing. Your clients are going to stick around longer term. They're going to become mm. loyal to your brand because you're consistent about what you're saying over time. You're delivering on your promise time and again. And then they become brand advocates for your brand. The reputation grows in the marketplace. And again, you're banking all of that equity and you're building that reputation. So look, if if the only reason that you would consider going back to the beginning and building a brand strategy, even if you have a nominal level of success, it would be to get crystal clear on who your audience is. Because even if you have revenue coming in, chances are there are other segments of the market who want and need what you have, but you're not speaking to them in a way that's compelling to them. A, a little tweak in, in your strategy can double or even triple your revenue because all of a sudden you're talking mm -hmm. to these other market segments who want and need what you have. So if for no other reason to, to consider doing a, a, a brand strategy from scratch, it's to get crystal clear on the, the, the segments of the market that you want to go after and how you're going to appeal to them through that reason that you'll give them to choose you over your competitors. Hmm. I know like, as you're saying this, and I, I know some of the entrepreneurs that may be listening, and I think myself, if I look back two, three years ago, I might be listening to this and saying, oh yeah, like this is all great. I'll just do it myself, right? I just got to ask myself, who are, why are, who are we uh, here for? And why should we choose our, us over our competitors, right? Like, why can't, why do I need to high, pay Ten twenty thousand dollars for a brand strategy. Why can't I just do this myself? So, I'd love to hear your take. Absolutely, uh, I, I could give you a, le a list of a hundred questions, and if you were able to take the time and answer each and every one of those questions meticulously, you would have the ingredients for a brand strategy. You you would you would have, you know, eighty percent of the value of brand strategy because all of a sudden you understand these things, and even if you if you partook in that exercise alone, the clarity you would have on the other side of that just by answering those questions would be immense. Where a brand strategist comes into play is understanding and knowing the specific questions that they need to ask you because it changes from one market to the next. 
um, in terms of how you're going to be different, the solution that you're going to be to offer, why your audience would choose you over your competitors. There is some experience and intricacies within those questions that you know a, a, an experienced brand strategist can help you come to the right conclusion. And you know it is a creative game as well. If you don't have that creative side. Uh, to your personality. And if you don't have that experience, then finding that unique differentiator to build your positioning strategy and your brand strategy around can be a huge challenge. Once you've answered all of those questions as well, it's about deciding, it's about understanding the frameworks and the systems where you can take those answers and you can put them into the right boxes. And, you know, those answers are ingredients. Okay. So, so like any chef, you know, uh, me, for example, if I go down to the kitchen and I, and I take out six or seven ingredients, you know, and I have a, a professional chef beside me and they take out the six or seven other ingredients, they are going to do a much better job at cooking dinner than I am. Because, you know, although I have the ingredients, I just don't have the know-how and, and the understanding to be able to put those ingredients together and to, to, to go through the process of, of producing a beautiful meal or a beautiful cake or something like that. So, so yes, there, there is, it, it, branding is really about simplicity, but simplicity is a lot harder than you think. Mm. You know, when you see it, it looks so obvious, right. but <laughs> it, 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 takes, it takes so much time and effort to get to that place of simplicity. And, you know, Steve Jobs was a, a perfect example of someone who was obsessed with simplicity. And when, you know, after a while, when, when the iPod was around, you're like, yeah, sure. It makes sense. Like the, you know, you twist this, this circular thing around to find your, 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 your songs and you just click on the middle button. It's, it's so seamless. It's duh. Like, why did no one else think of that before? Because simplicity is harder than you think it, it mm. takes, you know, you, you have to take the long journey to get to simplicity. But when you get there and you look back, it's like, why did no one else think of this before? So, you know, when, when, when for, for a business owner or an entrepreneur who's thinking about doing this themselves, yes, you can start with questions and you can get that clarity. Absolutely. But if you hit a roadblock or, or if, if you need help really defining that difference and coming up with that positioning strategy and then, you know, really articulating and defining exactly the type of attributes that you're going to use and how those attributes are going to influence all of your communication and all of your marketing. That's where a brand strategist can help you out because it, although branding is simple, the, the, the process of, of getting to the end result is, is more than just asking a few questions. Yeah. I always like to say that like, it, it's surprisingly hard to actually sit down and think, right? Like, especially if you're a business owner, you have all these opportunities, all these things that are coming at you 24 seven. Like you really think you're going to have the time to like sit there and like really go deep inside mm -hmm. yourself. Like, you're going to get, I mean, most people get bored of it. They're like, okay, I got something else that's more important that I need to work on. Right. But when you hire a brand strategist, right? Like you're, you're forced to actually do the hard thinking with the person. Right. And then they, they can guide you through that thinking. Um, and so I think it's, uh, it's invaluable. And like, if, if you actually invest the time into thinking, right. And actually coming up with that clear strategy, uh, then it, it pays dividends for, you know, the, the rest of your life of the brand. And, right. So, and the, be the beauty of brand strategy and any, any experienced strategist will tell you this is that the, the best solutions come from the client, mm -hmm. but they don't know, they don't have the tin opener to be able to get to that answer. It's the strategist asking the right questions from the right perspective and evoking the right ideas, insights, and feelings from their client, and then being able to take those answers and, you know, like a, like a professional chef, present those ingredients together in a way that is appetizing. And, mm. you know, that if, if uh, professional brand builders do this with their clients, or entrepreneurs do this with their brand strategists and they're guided along the way, it's actually the client and the entrepreneur themselves that are building the brand. And because they're building it, they're not just outsourcing it to someone like a, a freelance designer who comes back with a logo A, B, and C, which one do you like? No, they're part of the process. 
They know exactly who their audience is. They feel this connection to them and this tangibility. They know exactly why they're different and they're invested in their brand. They believe in their brand. So the difference between sending a client away with a brand strategy that they're committed to, that they're invested in versus sending a client away with a logo that you've produced for them it, the, the the contrast is completely different. The relationship that you're able to build with clients who you're able to take on a, a process and they, they actually build a brand that they, they go, yes, this is who we are. This is what we believe. And that believability then feeds into the business and everything they do because they know they have this institution to bank their equity as they go. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it really is a, a collaborative process. And if the client and the entrepreneur is part of it, then the brand that they build, they'll actually believe in and that will feed, feed into everything that they do. Mm -hmm. No, I really appreciate you taking the time. I will, I will say just one last point is that like if you're a freelance designer that's listening or in the freelance game and you're looking to make the switch, um, Stephen has a course, uh, Brand Master Academy. There's a lot of resources for people making the switch. And the, the switch is it, the quality of life and the fulfillment you get out of the work is uh, undeniable, right? Like you're going from like people telling you what to do no, this sucks. Do this again from like people actually valuing your opinion, right? Asking you, Hey, what do you think about this? How do I get through this? And you're actually helping them solve problems. You've absolutely hit it. And I, I kind of touched on this earlier when I was, when I was doing freelancing and, and, you know, I, I went from loving what I was doing to feeling that my soul was being crushed because I was working with the wrong clients. You know, when you, when you, um, if you do go to brandmasteracademy.com, it, there's a there's a a tab at the the top called reviews and these are all people who were freelance designers who were struggling with that exact problem of working with the wrong clients you know not charging the right amount and you can see the transformation through those reviews and mm. you know so many of my students have told me that they've fallen in love again with the the with with their career and with, with what they do when they had fallen out of love with it before because they're helping their clients on this different level and they're sending their clients away with brands that they believe in they're building those types of relationships and they really feel that they, they're they're contributing to the market and they're getting paid a lot better for doing that as well so it's um so yeah that that those reviews are are you know uh, they're really special to me because that's my contribution and, and that's that's the reward that I'm getting as well. But um mm. but yeah, if you are if you are interested in in you know making that transition, there's a there's a um there's a document that you can download on brandmasteracademy.com called the Pro Brand Strategy Blueprint. It's on the, the homepage as soon as you go there, download that and that will uh, that will give you a lot of those key elements that we've spoken about today and how to start putting those into place. Hmm. So I'll leave the link in the description to brandmasteracademy.com. Uh, for the people that are looking to get in touch with you or follow you on uh, socials, uh, how can they find you? Yeah, so Brandmaster Academy on YouTube. Just search Brandmaster Academy and you know, you'll know you come across the channel. There are hundreds of videos now at this stage on all different facets of branding from you know, customer research to positioning strategy to brand storytelling and every everywhere in between. So if you want to start to, to uh, you know, to really get a, a taste for what brand strategy is about, that's a that's a great place to start. Or as I said, brandmasteracademy.com, get yourself that, uh, that uh, pro brand strategy blueprint, and then you'll start to receive educational emails from me that will, will help you to, to learn in a more progressive way that way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephen. Really uh, enjoyed this conversation. Thanks, Ahmed. Thanks for having me. Now, as always, I have my key takeaways from this episode. But before we get into that, I want to share a clip with you from our discussion with Sam Karen on Branding 101. As a personal brand, I think color is kind of kind of overrated, right? I know it's the thing that, that people that people see, but I don't think anybody follows me or or connects with me based on that that green color right the, i think the first thing for personal brands what they see is they see your personality they see your uh, the way you connect with people and i think that's just a lot more important than than what colors and and how your designs look and as long as your your personality is kind of like everything you do kind of fits within that personality and that that connection that you've that you've built for for your own personal brand i think that's just way more important
If you enjoyed this discussion with Stephen, I'm sure you'll also enjoy the episode with Sam. Check it out wherever you're listening to this podcast. It is episode number 50. Now here are my key takeaways. Number one, when it comes to positioning yourself as a brand strategist on social media, you can't be talking about pixels and websites. You have to really understand the craft, change the conversations you have with your clients, and get into the nitty gritty of brand strategy on your social media. And number two, the most fundamental brand strategy questions are who are we for and why should they choose us over our competitors? When you're building a brand, take the time to get clear on your brand's answer to these questions so you can communicate your message properly to your prospects. And that is all for this episode. If you enjoyed this discussion, the easiest way to help out is to leave a review and share with a friend. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next episode.